Hi, this is Bishop Lafer, and this is my week three development uh, screen capture for advanced server side languages. So this week I accomplished the CRUD functionality for my application. Um, if I log in, I've got two different member types or user types. One's a team member and one's a manager. Wendy is only a team manager or a team member, excuse me. So we'll log in as a team member first, and we can see. Um, all the available tasks and this is uh, updated as it changes. The complete task button is there but it doesn't work. That's next week's functionality or part of next week's functionality. I'll probably do, I think I'm going to have a modal pop-up modal that has an area to leave a message and then complete the task and then when the task is completed it will store a date for the day that the task was completed as well as the user ID of the user who completed the task and then probably the message as well. I didn't think about that until right now, but we'll log out of Wendy and then we'll log in as a manager. And instead of just being able to see the available tasks, you have this create a task button which launches this form to create a new task. So we'll create a new task demonstration. This is the new, and this is the task we just created. And then I'm also using jQuery UI date picker. And we'll just make this one do, let's do today. So create a task. So now there's <clears throat> five available tasks and that demonstration, oh, my grid is broken. I have to fix my grid too, so if I delete this, there's four tasks. The delete works too, and uh, this is a task I just created and the grid still works. I'm gonna have to figure out how to make the grid work with, um, basically with tasks that have longer descriptions, it makes this panel bigger. And so the grid breaks. I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that. Um, but the completed task is just in a table, and it's got this completed by field. And I just created in my database. Let me connect. I was recording this, and then my computer died. So this is round two. All right. So in the task table. I've got this com com completed user ID, so that's the user who completed it. Um, that way I can fill out this, but for the time being, it doesn't have anything in it. I'm just gonna put, um, I'm gonna echo out the user ID, just so that we can see the functionality in the video. And now no, it's comp user ID. works okay so yeah for now I've just got the user ID I'll change I got to do a new query to make it um, to fill in the actual username but I will do that by next week and so yeah that's the functionality so I'm using bootstrap this is a bootstrap tab as well as the panel styling in the table striped and hover and then this is also bootstrap, this is jQuery UI. Cool, so that works. On uh, the code I've got three, three new views, create task, edit task, and task list. So task list is if you're a team member and you log in, this is the view that you're directed to. And it's just <clears throat> the tasks all printed out to the user in the panel each with a column small stick so it's a responsive layout so if you're on a mobile phone it would just take up the entire screen which is, I can show you real quick so instead it looks like this on a mobile phone
So it is responsive. So if you're on a tablet, it would look like that if you're on a small tablet. Still, basically, until you get down to phone size, it changes. And that's using Bootstrap. Um, but my grid's broken because of the long description, so I'm gonna have to figure that out before next week. Um, the create task is the view if you are a manager. So if you come in, you're a manager, then I've just got this is the button that launches the new task form, which is here. And the new task form is going to the site controller with a new task method, so that's here. Everything is in the, I'm only using three controllers which is login, logout, and site controller. So the login controller just, I'm using the user model to validate that when the user logs in that it exists and the password, username, and password match. And if they're logged in, then I am um, selecting that entire row from the database, storing it in a variable that's uh, an array with uh, keys, keyed array. And I'm storing this information, the username, the user type, the user ID, and a key of is logged in, and I'm setting that equal to true. So I need the username, I need the user type so that I can tell what type of user it is and what information to display to who, and I need the user ID so that when they're logged in, um, I can store what user is, has completed a task or which user created a task. And so I'm storing all that information in the session so I can access it elsewhere and then I'm sending them to the site controller and the members area method. And so in members area, this is, I'm um, taking the information that's coming in or back that I just stored in the session back out and I'm storing it in the data array. And then I'm saying if the user type is equal to one, so if you're a manager, then I'm sending you to the create task view. And if you're not a manager, you're a team men member, then I'm sending you to the task list view. And so in the task, create task view, there's a couple things that you can do. You can create a new task or you can edit a task or you can delete a task. And so that is all handled in the site controller and then also the task model. So um, for creating a task, I've got this function in the um, site controller that just loads the task model and then executes a method or a function in the task model which is create task and then I'm storing all the information about the task that I collected from the form the name the description the deadline and the owner so the owner is coming out of the session which is that user ID that I say stored in the session when the user logged in everything else is coming from the form and there's other fields in the tasks table where this information is being stored there's also the task comp date which is going to be when the user when a user completes it that will have a date there uh, the default is null for the time being and then this should actually be structure I do need to allow null on this comp user ID because if it hasn't been completed it needs to be null so this should be same. All right, so that's fixed. So yeah, then I'm inserting into that into that database that I just had pulled up in Super Pro into this tasks table. I'm inserting these tasks. And there are six total tasks. Four are available that have that still have a null value for the task comp column. And then two are completed which have a value in the task comp column. And that's how I'm differentiating in the create task in that tabbed section here that is active. So where task comp is null, that means it doesn't have a completion date and so it's still available and then 
here where task comp is not null, that is means that it has a value, therefore it has been completed, and so that's why it's in the completed tasks. And so next week in the task list, where this button is, this complete task, I had left the href blank, but what it's gonna do, it's gonna send, I might, <clears throat> I don't know if I, should, do I create complete task? I'd probably just do complete task in the site controller. It might be a better idea to have a just tasks controller for this stuff, but maybe not because of the is logged in, but I guess I could just do an is logged in function in the tasks just to be safe. I don't really know. I'm just gonna do it here in the site controller. I'm gonna have the complete task and in the complete task I'll send an email notification to the task owner as well as store some more information in the database. And I'll fix so that instead of the user ID you'll be able to tell what user. It'll say the username here. Okay, thank you very much. Have a I forgot to show you the edit functionality. So login is a manager and if you go to edit a task, this task has been edited and we'll change it from due date of the 31st to we'll make it June 30th. Save changes and you can see that those changes updated. And if you'll notice, here in the URL I've got this 40. That 40 is the ID of this task. So that's the task ID that corresponds to my database. And I am in edit task. Here, the form action, when I submit the form, it's the base URL and then I'm also using that, passing the parameter in of that task ID and then in the edit task function in the site controller I'm calling the um, I'm just going back to the edit task because when I call that what is it change task edit task so in the site controller I'm actually going here to change task right and then I'm loading the model. I'm taking that parameter that I'm passing in in the URL. So this URI segment three being site controller edit task. And then um, 40 being a parameter. Well, that's actually not the URL I'm on. So when I save it changes. Now here I am, change task 40. That sent me back here. And then I'm calling the task model update task function and I'm passing in that task ID. So in the task model, I've got this update task function and it's accepting the parameter of task ID. And then I'm storing the information that I'm taking from the form. And then I'm putting it, I'm putting all of that information into this array and then I'm selecting the database where the task ID column is equal to the task ID that I passed in to this function. And then I'm updating that row with this array that I just created. And then to delete a task, it works similarly. I'm accepting a parameter of task ID and then I'm just creating an array that has the task ID uh, with a key task ID so that when I say this DB delete from the table tasks where this task data array where task ID the column task ID is equal to the task ID parameter that I accepted into this function which was passed in from the delete task button which is here delete task and I'm passing in this parameter Cool. Thank you very much.